It's been almost a year and a half since the release of GTA The Trilogy The Definitive Edition, and numerous bugs, glitches, imperfection, and easily noticeable carelessness are unfortunately still a daily bread for players of this title. Updates come out rarely, and although they sometimes contain a lot of changes, they still don't eliminate the shortcomings that annoy us so much. Or even when they do not annoy us, they still irritate the eyes and generate the question in our mind, how did this not get fixed? However, today we would like to look at these games from a completely different angle. Forget about the things that annoy us and focus only on the positive aspects, on the elements after seeing which we could say, yes. This is indeed a good change. We'll start with the change from GTA 3 and GTA Vice City, which deals with the effect of taking an adrenaline pill. This change shows how little it takes sometimes to make a player think, oh boy, this is really cool. Previously, whether in GTA 3 or GTA Vice City, the adrenaline pill only gave the player a time slowdown effect. In turn, in the remasters, this effect has been enriched with an interesting looking glow that gives the impression that the protagonist has taken some drug. Another small change that makes us happy is off-road driving. It's not about feelings from driving a vehicle, but about the visual envelope. And that is what happens on the screens of our monitors when we drive on the beach, for example. In the originals, this effect was quite poor. From under the wheels of the vehicle we were moving, there was often not the slightest pollen. In turn, now in every remastered part of the trilogy, it just looks cool. What happens behind the car we're driving is now much more realistic and pleasing to the eye. In short, the level of immersion is much better in the remasters. GTA San Andreas was, in many ways, a revolutionary part of the series. One of the elements that appeared in this production and which greatly pleased the crowd of players is swimming, and even better, diving. Exploring the underwater world was great and you could find collectibles in it. In the remasters, a positive change in this aspect is the diversification of the underwater world. That is all additional elements that we can find there from now on. For instance, take a look at this comparison. In this aspect, the remaster simply wins. Additional elements are generally something that is a big advantage of the remasters. Games, in this respect, have become much more interesting. Why? Well, because it's better to look at a garage that has elements characteristic of such a place, such as an old tire, a cabinet with tools, or a petrol can, than an empty place where the only thing we'll find is a parked car. In this regard, at least in our opinion, a good thing is also the mechanics of building interiors created using the interior mapping shader, which, as we've probably mentioned before, appeared in one of the Spider-Man games. While many people initially complained about this, it is actually a good change. Yes, when we walk through the streets of the cities in GTA The Trilogy and carefully look at the interiors, then maybe these interiors don't look fantastic. But let's face it, hardly anyone crosses the streets of GTA cities on foot. And when we drive a car, the situation changes dramatically. Then the effect that these interiors give is much better and you get the impression that something is going on inside, which in turn affects our impressions of the general life of the city. Another change, very minor, but one that quickly caught our attention is the visual change that we can observe when taking off the Hydra vertically. The remaster finally gives us the feeling that CJ sat in the cockpit of a huge machine weighing several tons, which requires enormous power to lift. We definitely did not experience such sensations in the original. The fact that the weather conditions in the remasters are a total failure is just what we know, and in theory, you can end the topic right there. We are often literally shocked seeing what is happening on the screen, thus wondering how the developers could let something like this happen at all. However, there are some advantages to this as well. This is about vegetation that reacts very well to weather conditions accompanied by stronger winds. The strip in Las Venturas and the palm trees swaying in the wind seem to be the coolest in this regard. However, other similar behavior of vegetation can be observed in many places on the map. In terms of moving vegetation, 
it also reacts to the main character, which we can test for ourselves on the example of bushes along the road leading to Tommy's mansion. In this topic, the effect that we will experience while walking in puddles is a good thing, which can be seen very nicely in the example of GTA 3 and Claude walking on a puddle which is located, for example, right next to his hideout on Staunton Island. Going further, it's worth mentioning that it wasn't until the GTA 3 remaster that players finally got a map in the game menu. Many people often had bad memories of GTA 3 due to the lack of a map, because although the world itself is not particularly large, some missions are so poorly constructed that people playing this game for the first time often get lost and don't know where to go. We often thought about whether the point on the map is in the part of the city we are currently in, or whether we should go to a completely different island of Liberty City. It used to be hard to define, but now it's much better. GPS in Grand Theft Auto 4 was one of the most groundbreaking gameplay features presented in the GTA franchise. Players finally no longer had to wonder which way would be the fastest. Fortunately, what seemed obvious in this case has become a fact. Well, GTA The Trilogy The Definitive Edition also received such a function and it's certainly a good move on the part of Grove Street Games. Unfortunately, the outcome itself looks a bit messy. Sometimes the GPA is buggy and shows quite abstract routes, but for the most part, you can't complain too much. Another interesting enrichment in the remasters is the ability to restart a failed mission, which in our opinion is just a bullseye. Ever since GTA 3, players have been a bit tired of having to constantly drive to a destination after a mission has failed. It was especially annoying in San Andreas, where traveling between the countryside and San Fierro was taking simply too long. And when you died on the way, the thought itself of doing it all over again could make you go mad. Generally, we had to load the save first, because we usually fail the mission by dying. And since many players wanted to keep their weapons and money, there was simply no better way than to reload the game. In addition, there was the previously mentioned access and the whole thing could take a long time. So as far as this issue is concerned, the definitive edition did not disappoint and became much more convenient in this respect. Moving on, we can't forget about the spectacular explosions of vehicles and the traces they leave behind. It's definitely not looking bad. Maybe at times the explosions seem a bit exaggerated, but at the same time, these effects fit well in the atmosphere of these three old parts of GTA. From now on, the explosion can be said to have some effects on the elements of the environment, and not only on the vehicle itself or nearby NPCs. We actually associate it nicely with the Saints Row series, where we can freely destroy many elements of the environment and it's simply more realistic. Also, at least in this case, the use of Unreal Engine 4 turned out to be a good idea. Returning to what the players particularly complained about in GTA 3 and Vice City, it is necessary to say a few words about the camera and vehicles. Although in most cases, while driving, we focus on what is in front of us, it's still nice to be able to rotate the camera because it can make it easier for us. For example, when we want to reverse or when we want to keep our goal in sight all the time. And finally, a few words about the lighting issue in GTA The Trilogy Definitive Edition. In general, opinions can be completely different here, because at the beginning of the release of the trilogy, in many places, the lighting was, what can we say, poorly done. However, when we look at how things are after these few updates, it turns out that, at times, the game looks fabulous. For instance, in the various tunnels in GTA San Andreas, there's much better visibility, and besides, all parts of the trilogy have an even cooler atmosphere at night. Despite the great sympathy for the originals, it must be admitted that there were some shortcomings, and fortunately, they were filled by the remasters. In the meantime, moving on to a small summary, the undeniable fact is that GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition turned out to be one big flop. The game is still full of bugs, collisions or textures are missing in some places, and the characters look disgusting. However, as you can see, not all remasters completely suck, because as we could see today, Grove Street Games has not only reworked the mobile ports of these installments, but also enriched them with interesting content that is important to the players in terms of gameplay. 
adrenaline pills gained a cooler effect, the interiors of buildings became more varied, and some elements of the environment, such as all kinds of vegetation, genuinely react to changes in weather conditions and even characters. And best of all, Grove Street Games noticed that some solutions borrowed from the newer parts of the cycle, such as repeating a failed mission or GPS, could be a perfect match for remasters, and decided to make use of them. We're waiting to hear what you think about it, so we'd appreciate your feedback in the comments section. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and see you in the next episodes. Take care!